Today's 60-bit superhero game is a little bit weird, but I want you to walk with me here. It is uh, Michael Jordan, and it's uh, Chaos in the Windy City. Yes, it's a Michael Jordan video game, but it's not a basketball game per se. And in fact, uh, you know, I've got Michael Jordan fever right now because every week I'm watching The Last Dance, like many of you are. It's an incredible documentary series on ESPN in the States, and it's on uh, Netflix in Canada, and it's incredible. And Michael Jordan is my favorite basketball player of all time. I know, surprise, surprise, he's everybody's favorite basketball player of all time. But he's an incredible athlete, and he became a uh, pop superstar sensation uh, that uh, transcended the world of sports and uh, consequently EA picked up on that and in 1994 with the help of early game designer Amy Hennig came up with Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City and it's an action adventure game where Michael for all intents and purposes is a superhero with super heroic powers like the ability to throw freeze balls and fire basketballs and heat seeking basketballs he's got the ability to leap incredibly high distances and take out all kinds of crazy bad guys he's going up against an evildoer named Max Cranium who has kidnapped a bunch of his uh, team mates just before a charity game is about to take place and so Michael Jordan um, you know in the vein of a comic book story has to go and save all of his different teammates from these different uh, you know there's they're locked up in cells they're in factories they're in a lab and across a bunch of different levels including some sequences where you're traveling on the famous Chicago L trains throwing basketballs at journalists who are trying to take Michael Jordan's picture I'm not making this up and clearly uh, th this was a statement on behalf of uh, Jordan and the designers here about uh, Jordan's sort of love-hate relationship with the press, which I thought was pretty funny. And the levels actually are pretty interesting. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, electric bolts and stuff like that in the lab. You've got, like, radioactive sludge in the factory. Uh, and you've got all kinds of different bad guys that are going to pop up. I was fighting, like, this snake made out of basketballs. I was fighting this referee on a unicycle. Uh, yeah, I was fighting lots of little... Uh, basketball-shaped robots that would erupt after you defeated them into some kind of cool power-up. There were all kinds of crazy creations. Some of them looked like uh, almost so like something that had popped out of Vector Man or something like that. A tremendous amount of effort has been put into the animations, into the enemy designs. The level backgrounds are crazy. You'll see like these little eyeballs sort of looking back and forth. Every once in a while you'll see a portrait of Dr. Max Cranium looking nefarious in the background. And in addition to the lab and the uh, factory and the trains that you're on and these these holding cells that you have to free everybody from. You're also going into tunnels and you're also in the lair of Dr. Max Cranium, which is kind of circus-esque as well. It's like fairgrounds. There's electric eels and one of the things that you definitely have to do, there is no shying away from the fact that this is a basketball superstar, so you've got to constantly go up for dunks on uh, hoops that are scattered throughout each of the levels. Some of them will give you like little gold and silver basketballs and if you earn enough of those, you'll get extra lives. And there's lots of little sort of bonus rooms that you can go into where you have to get as many dunks as possible in a set amount of time And you leave with whatever you can get within that time You can earn little extra 23s. They'll be floating around you can collect those and that gives you an extra life There's little power-up health things that you can collect all over the place including Wheaties boxes and Gatorade drinks Which is crazy product placement, but it all fits with the Michael Jordan brand and the myth. And all of those elements actually make sense in a weird, esoteric, kind of fairy tale way. So there's lots of cool little design pieces and elements all the way through here, and I can't really fault the art style. This actually looks and runs pretty well. There's a fluidity and a gracefulness, I think, to the way that this game kind of uh, looks but it's in the play of the game that is just excruciating. There is no flow, and for a game based on one of the most graceful athletes ever, of all time, it's such a letdown to, f to be so clunky. It's such a pain in the butt. It's like fun it just gets crushed in this game. It's like every chance for there to be a sense of um, agency and ownership over your abilities and your move sets and and you know the design pieces that look so engaging and enticing every jump every jump to a platform just feels so life or death so abrupt and awful and not clean 
And so you're going to be constantly, um, you know, getting hit by cheap shots from enemies or missing a jump or, I mean, just the sheer fact that, and I understand the philosophy behind this, but the sheer fact that throwing the basketball is one button, but going up for a dunk is a whole different jump and slam mechanic. So you'll find yourself in moments in the game where you've got something like a basketball hoop that you need to dunk on because you're down to your one last basketball of health. There's a lot of basketballs. It's hard to talk about this thing without saying the word basketball a million times. So you're throwing basketballs at the enemies that are all around you and you're trying to dunk, but it's a totally different button uh, system. And you can't throw the basketballs at bad guys in any other direction than on a horizontal plane. I was constantly jumping and shooting the basketball uh, horizontally uh, where I didn't want to. And the dunk uh, sort of physics, so when you jump up, you can slam the basketball and it kind of comes down in a diagonal, but it seems so arbitrary. But that's also a combat move because there are certain enemies like little tiny spiders or little goo, you, you know, uh, creations that erupt out of a bigger piece of goo, you know, that old mechanic, uh, that you need to shoot a basketball down at the floor, but it's not precise. And so the precision on, on dunking never feels quite correct. The precision on getting enemies that you need to hit that are on the floor around you, and sometimes you have to crash through a floor to get down below, are not correct. The fact that you can't throw a basketball in any other direction than straight ahead and, you know, whatever you might be facing really limits the engagement with the environment and the, uh, you know, your arsenal against the enemies. And so it constantly is fighting you. Even the fact that you have to jump up and be perfectly positioned to grab onto uh, uh, a zip line or a hook that's going to carry you across and you're b you'll be jumping and the hand will go past the the you know the animation of that hook or zip line piece but it won't latch on right? for whatever reason so consequently you'll die often because you'll fall into some goo or water or you'll get electrocuted by something and i was I was just so pissed off by this game. It really did me in. It was not fun to play. And there were so many cool hooks, so many things in here to entice me. You know, the fact that it's kind of got this, this superhero-esque vibe to it. It's, it stars my favorite athlete of all time. It's got okay music. It's got pretty decent visuals. The fact that he's running around rescuing his teammates. There's so many cool little pieces in this. And then the gameplay was just excruciating and just so punishing over and over again. And um, uh, that was it. I've had this cartridge forever. And back it goes, never to be taken out again. I'm not getting rid of it because there's pieces in this that I, I certainly appreciate. I love the fact that Amy Hennig worked on this thing. But it's just not fun to play. And it really bugged me. I'm going to give Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City a 4 out of 10.